Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Everyday Caddy for the Everyday Guys. So I've been getting a few questions that are shooting related and I thought what better option than to come to a firing range. I just want to say thanks to the guys at Shokukai Pistol Shooting Club for making the range available. Suleim and Samai and, and Abdullah is our range officer today. So with me I've got James Smart. I'm not going to let James Smart do his own introduction because he's way too modest. So I'm going to run through the 10% I do know about James Smart. So I met him about 10 years ago. It's been a long 10 years. He's currently a, a jiu-jitsu black belt. He's rerun his own street smart uh, close quarter combat course, which I've done, which is amazing. Focuses on not only your ability to fight, but your mindset. He's trained alongside people like um, Lee Morrison, South Nark, Kelly McCann, real top guys in, in um, the international pistol and, and combat industry. He's also trained guys like Poppy or the Brazilian Special Forces, forces kind of like the, the Special Task Force of South Africa, the real deal guys. So I think the list goes on, but you kind of get in the picture. He does know what he's talking about. And I just want to say thank you to him for making himself available to us. He's a real, a real top shooter and a wealth of information and he's definitely take the channel to that next level. We're going to be looking at various basic self-defense pistol shooting concepts we're going to be showing techniques there is going to be loud noises if you want to skip to that i will put the time down below if you absolutely aren't interested in one of what i want to say and just one of the shooting you can do that let's get into this video which is going to basically be all about trigger control when to to put your finger on the trigger how to squeeze where your finger should be on the trigger and the results thereof and also the results of doing it incorrectly so let's have a look uh, thank you very much for the amazing introduction from Ryan there. I do just want to point out that I'm not a, uh, I specialize more in uh, the unarmed combat stroke defensive tactic. I'm not a firearms instructor, certified firearms instructor. I have done a lot of firearms courses with some really good guys, much better guys than me. So, you know, anything that I do put across is my opinion or my, what I've learned over time of, of shooting. Um, it's it's not a you know if you like a professional a professional certified opinion. Ryan and I were talking about when the finger. He was asking about when the finger goes on the trigger, and how the finger should be positioned on the trigger. So I just really wanted to talk about when the finger goes on the trigger, and and a term that we were talking about just before we started recording about staging the trigger, which was uh, which is an interesting one. So just if I do a a draw here, and I would say that some things about the draw stroke that I'm going to do, especially with re regards to the finger going on the trigger. Uh, so I'm going to do it and then I'll kind of talk about what I think could be better or why I don't do it certain ways. Okay, so before I do any demonstrations or anything, I just want to um, just make sure that everyone's happy with that my firearm is uh, safe. So I'm going to just open the slide, crack the slide a few times. Okay, nothing in there, nothing in the, in the chamber, in the, the barrel, nothing in the magwell. Okay, physical and visual checks. Okay, look away. It's always a good idea to look away and then look back and just double check. Okay, drop in the slide forward and um, and I'll just do the drive shot. Okay, so safe gun. So from here, <clears throat> okay. Um, so with, let me do the draw stroke first and then I'll just talk about um, why I think there's some, some problems with this, this draw stroke that I'm gonna show you. Okay, related to getting the finger. Okay, I got two issues with what I've just done there. Uh, two main issues. My first issue is the the how early my hand, my finger is going into the trigger. If you think about it, you don't want your finger going into the trigger or onto the trigger until you've firmly made your decision that you're going to actually squeeze that trigger for your shot. And so the earlier it goes in, or let's say the later I can leave that 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 process, gives me more time. One of the things that people talk about as being a benefit to revolvers is the fact that it's got a double trigger and therefore a long trigger pull giving a little, it might only be a split second, but it's a, a little bit more time to be able to make that decision, should I, shouldn't I? And the second thing is, um, and I know there's gonna be some controversy about this, is the position of the finger on the trigger. When I, put, when I put my finger into the trigger, I wrapped it all the way through, okay? And I'm gonna talk about pros and cons with regards to that. And obviously there's, uh, some of you guys might know, there's a very well-known, um, um, shooting celebrity, let's say, who advocates that. So let's quickly talk about when the finger goes in the trigger. The first thing is when I draw the firearm, um, I'm a huge advocate of, of what's called a high V. And a high V is where my trigger finger sits in the, in the ejection port. When my finger comes into the injection port, okay, I know where it is right now. I don't need to look at the firearm. I don't need to wonder where it is. If I move it out of, out of the high V right now, 
okay? And it's not touching the firearm. Right now, I don't really know where my finger is in comparison to the rest of the firearm. A lot of people put the finger on the, on the frame, on the slide, but the problem is that there's so much area there that it might be, it might not be. Whereas if I put it in the ejection port, I know exactly where it is. I could run right now at full tilt and know my finger isn't going anywhere near the trigger, okay? So when I draw the firearm, my finger goes into high V. And then as I push the firearm out, my finger's gonna come out. Now, if I need to make a decision sooner, let's say before I fully extended, I need to decide that uh, I decide that I need to pull the trigger, then obviously my finger is going to move faster. But essentially what I'm looking for is that my finger will move to the trigger and squeeze as I reach full extension. So in other words, I've got my sight picture, I've got my sight alignment, and then my finger um, squeezes the trigger and I, and I break that shot as I reach full extension. As I said, if I need to break that shot earlier, then my finger just moves a little bit quicker. I'm not a fan of staging the trigger and staging the trigger would be, I guess, finding the, the break point, okay? So I don't like this. And I think the reason why I like this, so I've found the break point right now. The reason why I don't like this is because generally that's what happens when you do that. Okay, the trigger, um, I believe the trigger squeeze should be a squeeze from the very start of the trigger pull right the way through until breaking the shot. And then obviously your follow-up shots are done using that reset. Staging it on the way through, I believe causes that little um, anticipation and therefore often shooting low. When the finger comes through, it should just come through with a full squeeze from front to back um, as you get full extension of the trigger, uh, sorry, of the arms. Second thing, where does my, my finger go on the trigger? Got to tell you ahead of time, I'm a huge fan of Pat McNamara. Um, I watch his uh, YouTube channel, follow him on Instagram. His rock and roll is amazing. He advocates, and I did try it for a while, he advocates wrapping the finger right the way through the trigger. There's some good reasons that he puts around that. I've also got a friend in America who's, a, who's a, uh, on a SWAT team, and he also says, and it says a lot of the guys talk about wrapping the finger right the way through the trigger. I've always struggled with that. And most people I would say in the firearms industry uh, talk about having the, the trigger fall in between the first knuckle and the end of the index finger, which is what I find best personally. Now, the reason why I believe that makes sense is because what I find is when I wrap the finger right the way through the trigger, okay, and then I pull, if you look at the way my, your finger works, when I pull, when I squeeze that trigger, my trigger is curving and what tends to happen is that I find that the, when I squeeze the trigger with my finger wrapped all the way through, I end up with, and I'm over exaggerating it right now, but I end up with the, the firearm shooting slightly to the right because of that pulling of the trigger. Okay, if you think about it, shooting is not that difficult. To, to shoot accurately, all I need to do is get my sight um, alignment correct on the target and then do not disturb that sight alignment whilst I pull the trigger. And if I'm disturbing that in any way, then, then I'm gonna miss the target or, or shoot off to one side. So wrapping the finger right the way through, personally, I find I end up pulling the, tri the, the firearm to the, left, uh, to the right. Whereas if I use the center of the pad, and it's just like it, the, this, that first knuckle doesn't really move very much at all. Everything is based on the second knuckle of the finger. So if I now do this center of the pad and I squeeze backwards in the ideal world, is that my squeeze of the trigger is gonna be directly along the line of the sight, okay? And that should mean that the, the gun doesn't move from side to side. So squeezing the trigger from front, front to back all the way through till the shot is broken on full extension and uh, finger midway between, or trigger midway between the first knuckle and the index finger. So guys, what James is gonna do now is he's going to simulate the way he doesn't like doing it, and then also simulate the way he does like doing it. And that's, that's kind of gonna give you the proof from his, basically his ability and his evolution into why what he's saying works and why the thing he says doesn't work. And remember guys, everything on the channel is an opinion, nothing is a recommendation. You've got to do what works for you, what's comfortable for you. This is just basically uh, our way of looking at it. James is kind of a mentor to me, so I've known him for long enough to know that I don't have to question what he says, but at the end of the day, you've got to get trained by the guys that you feel comfortable with. So this is just our take on it. And, um, and let's, let's see what happens. He's going to be firing. Uh, 10 shots in the top circle, it's going ten, the top 10 shots are going to be the incorrect version of doing it. He's going to sort of pre-tension the trigger, um, sink his finger all the way through into the trigger guard, that kind of thing. We're going to see what that does. Okay, guys, so as Ryan just explained, I'm just going to take a few shots now. The first thing, and, and I just want to emphasize what Ryan said, this is just 
the way that I've learned to do it by training courses, by watching videos, by taking from other people, if you like, none of it's new. Um, I haven't created any of it. Um, it works for me. It's worked for me for a long time. I'm happy with it. You, I would really highly recommend that you do a lot of, you know, do your research, train with people, go and get training from professionals and find the way that works for you, that's comfortable for you. And then once you've established your way, then train it. There's no, there's no replacement for doing it again and again and again until you almost can't get it wrong. Um, that said, I'm about to take some shots. They might go wrong, they might go right. I'm not the best shooter in the world, so we'll see how that goes. So I'm gonna load my gun, um, reholster it, and then I'm, the first shots that I'm gonna do are where I'm gonna stage the trigger. So first five is where I'm gonna stage the trigger, and then the second five that I'll do is where I put my finger all the way through, hook it right through the trigger, and then I'll reload new magazine, and I'll take some shots, uh, five shots, just doing it the way that I would normally do it. Okay, so that was staging the trigger. The last one I would say was actually the, probably the most best example of my concern. I actually did feel that I staged it and then I flinched as I went to squeeze the trigger the rest of the way from the reset. Um, so I would say that was probably the, the better example. Now next one, I'm gonna wrap the trigger, all the, way, the trigger finger all the way through. Okay, some mixed results. Again, that first shot actually is one where I more honestly wrap my finger all the way through. Following shots after that, I actually found that I adjusted my grip. I didn't know I was gonna do it, but I found that I adjusted my grip to compensate for the fact that I was wrapping my finger all the way through. Whereas the first one, I actually had my normal grip and wrapped the finger all the way through. So I'm gonna do five more shots now, um, just uh, exactly the way that I would normally do it drawing the firearm, the middle of um, my finger between the tip and the first knuckle on the, send, on the trigger and just breaking the trigger ideally at full extension. See how we go. And I know exactly what went wrong with the, that last one there. I didn't pick up the front sight properly um, and I ended up anticipating the shot because I was thinking about having not picked up the front sight. Another really important thing about being able to train is being able to self-analyze what you did wrong. So now I could go back and I could correct and make sure that I'm picking up that front sight, focusing on the front sight and not worrying or not anticipating that front that uh, shot. So guys, that was kind of the drill and, and the idea of what we were going with. Remember, James is um, a fairly accomplished shooter. So while, while there isn't a bit of variance between, between the two shots, you can sort of see his grouping on the right hand side, which is when he made his personal adjustments are way tighter. Also have to take into account, James does, does quite a bit of shooting. So 
um, there is that automatic adjustment for change. So take that and multiply it by 10 and you'll kind of get uh, the variance I would have if I was to apply these, these techniques. So what we're going to do now is a small drill. I, I want to keep all these videos for the everyday guy who's not going to be able to spend 30 hours a week on the range and 10,000 rand worth of ammo. So everything we do is going to be based on 50 rounds. We're going to run a small drill that you can do to, to sort of maximize your range time. Um, and James will, will take you through the methodology behind that and then show it to you. Okay, so um, obviously fundamentals are essential and I'm a firm believer in slow practice. Speed will come out of slow practice. So pr practice deliberately, practice precisely, and then, uh, and then yeah, the, the speed will just naturally come out of that. So once you've got the fundamentals down, um, I, I only get a small amount of time to be able to spend on the range. I've got a limited amount of ammo. I need to get there. I need to do some practice and I need to get out of the gear. So I practice my fundamentals sometimes, um, but then what I like to do is bring it together. I've got one drill that I do. Understand it is a drill. So there's, there's, it's not replicating or um, it's not real world. It's just a drill to bring all the fundamentals together with a little bit of pressure and all into one drill so that I can get the maximum efficiency from time and ammo. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I've got two magazines. I've got one magazine with one round in and I've got another magazine with 10 rounds in or whatever, depending on how many times I want to run this drill. I'm going to run it three times to be able to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now, I'm not advocating and I'm not going to get into the argument of carrying one up, not carrying one up, all that kind of thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I'm going to keep my gun in the holster and I'm going to put this one round magazine into the firearm. Okay, I'm going to put my ears on and then we're going to get ready to go. Basically, what's going to happen is I'm going to draw, push the gun out. Obviously, there's no round in there because I haven't racked it, so it's going to go click. I'm going to tap and rack and then I'm going to fire my first shot. Then I'm going to have an empty magazine, so I've got to do a mag change, put that mag in and then I'm going to do two shots. I'm going to run it a few times and, uh, and we'll just see how it goes. What am I looking for? I'm just looking for combat effectiveness. So I'm not looking for grouping like this. I'm looking for something that's in, within, ideally within the hand. I believe in, in, in work it and get really good at it, but then try and break it. So maybe the shots start going a little bit wide. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I might need to slow down a bit. We'll work it as we go. Guys, thanks so much for checking out the channel. That's, that's this video done. I just want to talk about the, the deliberacy of the way uh, everything works. And it doesn't have to be ultra fast to begin with. Learn the basics. The more efficient you become at doing something, um, the faster you will naturally become at it. And in order to become efficient, you've got to get that basics down absolutely perfect. And it gets to a point where you can, where you can run that drill and have a grouping sort of hand-sized. You know, there was a lot of actions going on there. Still doing at a reasonable pace and being able to maintain um, quite quite high level of accuracy. So thank you to James. We are going to be doing more of these. We're going to be covering draw stroke and movement and all those things in the weeks to come. I want to say thank you to Suleiman Samai from the Shukakai Pistol Shooting Club as well as um, Abdullah who was our range officer today. We really appreciate it for making the, the range available to us. And we will see you guys soon. Have a good week. Cheers guys. God bless.